Hello, everyone. I am Susan Gerbeck. I attended PsychOn 2023, and though I am not a professional and was not asked to do this, I recorded many videos from the conference. I am not set up to video record. I simply use my iPhone. So these are mostly unedited videos you will find on a playlist. If you're watching this video now, be aware there is a playlist of other videos from PsychOn 2023. PsychOn 2024 will release their talks on their YouTube channel, which is um, Center for Inquiry. Uh, they will start releasing the 2023 videos probably in 2024. They'll release them every three weeks or so, which will time to, um, the last one will probably upload right before PsychOn 2024, which will be held in Las Vegas, Nevada, the last week of October at the Horseshoe Casino. I highly suggest that you check out the videos on the Center for Inquiries YouTube channel, as well as subscribe and set your alert bells for them. What you're looking at today is a video that I recorded at the conference on Sunday, October the 29th, 2023. This is the third paper in the Sunday paper talks. Um, some of the best part of PsychOn is the Sunday paper talks. These are curated talks. I um, am including a link in the description of this video. What you're about to see is Rodney Schmeltz and his graduate student, DJ Crossland. They are at the University of Edmund McEwen University, and they're going to be talking about wake up sheeple, personality traits, and belief in pseudoscience, which is a very interesting. These talks usually run about 20 minutes, and the people who apply to give these talks don't know they're going to be giving the talk until about a few weeks before the conference. It's quite interesting. I love the Sunday papers. Please check out the other ones that you will find on this playlist. And if you consider wanting to do a play, uh, a video in the future at SciCon, um, there are many avenues of finding out information about that, including some articles written by Rob Palmer for Skeptical Inquirer and um, many videos out there that I've recorded in the past. So enjoy this video and presentation by Rodney and DJ. Uh, Rodney Schmaltz is an associate professor at McEwen University in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. His research explores why people fall prey to pseudoscientific claims with an emphasis on strategies to promote and teach scientific skepticism. He is also part of our recently created League and Feld Alliance. Uh, Dr. Schwartz's work extends to the areas of workplace productivity and self-control. I could use a little of that, I think. Uh, focusing on evidence-based approaches to improve performance and reduce common workplace stressors. He is joined on stage with his student, DJ Crossland, an undergraduate author student at McEwen, whose current research focuses on examining the connection between personality traits and beliefs in pseudoscientific phenomena, which is the topic of interest that they will share with us today in the talk called Wake Up Shippel, Personality Traits and Belief in Pseudoscience. So let's welcome both our next speakers on stage. <laughs> some research that we just finished. Uh, we collected the data about a month ago, and we're going to talk to you a little bit about some personality traits that look like they predict belief in pseudoscience. Now, before we jump into it, though, I want to give you some background on where this idea came from. Uh, DJ and I were talking about some of the more unusual examples of pseudoscience we came across, such as quantum man. Slide show of hands, is anybody familiar with quantum man? Okay, this one was shut down a few years ago, and what it was, was a website where you could download medicine. <gasps> and the way it worked, well, of course, was that you give them money 
So let's say you get a cold, you give them money, you download something, that, that's your medicine, and then you look at it, and through quantum something, you feel better. But it's medicine, so you have to keep downloading it like you'd be taking pills. Now, I thought this one was a spoof. I, I dug pretty deep into it. I got to the point where you could give them your credit card. I did not. But they did have a section on skepticism. So, okay, at least they're addressing this. And if you clicked on their section on skepticism, it was a series of quotes on why skepticism is bad. <laughs> Another thing that we came across was, it was mentioned earlier in one of the talks, but it's urine therapy as a form of alternative medicine. So this claims to be able to alleviate various ailments, such as uh, dry, tired eyes. So you just add a few drops of urine to your eyes and it'll alleviate those symptoms. If you have a stuffy nose, that's, that's okay. It'll also alleviate that you just take a couple sniffs. And then also gargling urine for a few minutes will alleviate any, any issues with your gums, gum disease, anything oral. <laughs> One of the recommendations was to use four day year old air, urine but new urine works as well, so there you go. And of course, there are all the conspiracies and misinformation about COVID, such as uh, from the vaccines, the vaccines cause autism. The vaccines alter your DNA. The vaccines make you magnetic. And they've also added microchips to vaccines. Or the vaccines target athletes for some reason. Anyway, you get the picture. So as we're looking at this, and we had many more examples we were talking about, we started to realize there's an undercurrent there, and perhaps that undercurrent is selfishness. So if you've ever had an argument with an anti-vaxxer, and I'm sure many of you have, uh, if you say something like, you know, even if you're not getting the vaccine for yourself, you're helping others, that argument often falls flat. So we were interested to understand what role selfishness would play in relation to belief in pseudoscience. Now, as we have seen over the last couple of days, belief in pseudoscience is incredibly complex. There are cognitive biases we need to explore, social factors, societal factors. We're just looking at one piece of the puzzle. Specifically, we're interested in personality traits and belief in pseudoscience with a focus on selfishness. So we use the dark triad, uh, the dark triad also to, to test this. The dark triad traits, uh, are actually predictors that um, have significant correlations with the belief in conspiracy theories, specifically Machiavellianism and psychopathy. So the dark triad consists of narcissism, Machiavellianism, and psychopathy, whereas Machiavellianism, Machiavellianism is defined as being callous, immoral, and manipulative. An example of one of the statements from the questionnaire would be, I insist on getting the respect I deserve. And for narcissism, that is defined as excess, excessive self-importance, admiration, lacks empathy towards others. An example statement from that questionnaire would be, people tend to be easily manipulated. And then for psychopathy, that's characterized by being manipulative, lacking empathy, tendency towards antisocial behavior. <coughs> An example of that would be, payback needs to be quick and nasty. So a study done by Kaufman et al. in 2019 found that the dark triad had strong positive correlations with selfishness, while the light triad had negative correlations with selfishness. The light triad traits consist of faith in humanity, humanism, and Kantianism. Kantianism means the tendency to want to do the right thing because it is our moral duty, regardless of the consequences or personal gain. An example of one of those statements would be, I like to be authentic, even if it means it may damage my reputation. While well, humanism is defined as valuing the dignity and worth of everyone and values and ethics and reason over religion. An example from that questionnaire is, I enjoy listening to people from all walks of life. And faith in humanity can be defined as believing in the innate goodness of people. So I tend to see the best of people would be an example of that. And the selfishness way on the scale, <laughs> we were aiming to explore how different types of pseudoscientific beliefs may relate to personality traits of selfishness. The scale was created by Rin and Ah and focuses on three types of selfishness. Adaptive selfishness is the idea that it's okay to focus on yourself at times because taking care of yourself means that you can better help others. So an example would be uh, like on an airplane when they're telling you to put your oxygen mask on first before you help others. That would be a form of adaptive selfishness. One of the, the questions 
from the questionnaire was, even if it meant giving my kids an unfair advantage over others, I would do it for them. Egocentric selfishness is when you're only concerned about yourself and not the interests of others, but not going as far as to cause harm to them. So that would be like showing up late to somebody's birthday dinner without apologizing or even acknowledging that you're late and then trying to steal the attention. And then <clears throat> the most harmful form of selfishness is pathological selfishness. So this goes beyond, beyond normal self-interest. It's harmful, it's a harmful extreme that focuses on themselves and, the disregard, and they disregard needs and feelings of others, causing damage to relationships and overall well-being. It's like an obsession with one's own desires often at the expense of everyone else. So an example of these would be a business owner exploiting employees or cutting corners on safety for personal gain, even if that meant that it was going to, people were going to be injured. So what we know is that the light triad is negatively correlated with selfishness, which is not entirely surprising. So people who score higher in light triad traits tend to score lower on traits of selfishness. And the dark triad is positively correlated, so higher dark triad traits is also associated with a higher level of selfishness. So here's what we were interested in. Are people who score high in the personality trait of selfishness also more likely to endorse pseudoscientific beliefs? And we also wanted to look at what role the dark and light triad might play as well. Now the question is, why does this matter? Well, as we can see in this article, uh, it's by Global News, so that's a news place in Canada. <laughs> it was done in January 2023, and the harm done by the spread of misinformation during COVID was pretty extensive. There was approximately 2,800 deaths, tens of thousands of hospitalizations, and costs of up to almost $300 million. Misinformation contributed to vaccine hesit hesitancy in approximately 2.3 million Canadians. By understanding the role of selfishness, we can better tailor campaigns to combat belief in pseudoscience. For example, if selfishness is a factor, campaigns to promote vaccine vaccination should speak to personal benefits. If selfishness is not a factor, then focus more on the benefit to others and society. So if you look at an ad like this, this is targeted towards helping others, right? So get the vaccine to save lives. If it's the case, that people who believe in pseudoscience tend to score higher in selfishness, it might be that these ads won't be as effective. Now, it's not to say we shouldn't use ads like this, but we might need to supplement them with other ads that are much more targeted on the self if this data holds up. It's important to know, too, we don't want to paint people who believe in pseudoscience negatively and saying they're just selfish or whatever. I think, as we've seen over the last couple of days, and as you know, belief in pseudoscience is complex. Um, there's a lot of reasons people fall prey to pseudoscience. And with this selfishness measure, we all, we all fit somewhere in there. We're all a little bit selfish. But what we want to know is if that high selfishness is associated with belief in pseudoscience. So here's how we measure it. We got a sample of 411 undergrad students from our university, and the age was right around 20, and it was a predominantly female sample around 69%. Not a particularly diverse sample, but it was a good starting point. This age group tends to spend a lot of time on social media, and as we know, social media has a lot of misinformation. So we wanted to look at this group and see if there is anything there in terms of selfishness. Okay, so how we measured pseudoscience, we used uh, the inventory of epistemically and more to beliefs, and that was created by Dr. Dyer and Dr. Hall. Um, we, the paranormal beliefs, the average score for paranormal beliefs was 2.05, so this is being measured on a scale of one to five. So that includes astrology and ESP, uh, for religion, the average was 2.44, and that included in creation and faith and healing. For his health was acupuncture, homeopathy, and the average score for that was a little bit higher at 3.19. And extraordinary life forms was 2.31, and that includes the alien abduction and Bigfoot. And for conspiracy theories, the average was 2.79, and that was anti-vaccination chemtrails. Actually, Dr. Schmaltz's students 
I was not included in this, uh, made a video of him proving their suspicion that he is part reptilian. <laughs> they got me. Ghosts, the average was 2.72, and that included hauntings and Ouija. And science knowledge was the highest at 4.12, and that included the age of the Earth and the Big Bang Theory. The Dark Triad predicted beliefs similar to what was already found in literature. But what's more interesting is this. So the reason we use that scale is there's other scales of paranormal belief but they just focus on pseudoscience and the paranormal. And I think there's a risk that people quite quickly recognize what they're doing. Whereas this scale, with having science knowledge, those are questions to see if you understand actual scientific facts, and they're embedded throughout. We thought it might be a better measure for us. Now, what we found is that selfishness predicted the life triad. And uh, the way to think about this, we ran a regression analysis. So think of it this way, it's maybe a bit simplistic, but for every point that a person would score higher on selfishness, the light triad score would go down by negative 0.28, okay? And we also found that selfishness was indeed correlated with belief in pseudoscience. <clears throat> so again, for every point you go up in selfishness, you go up about 0.04 in belief in pseudoscience. That's quite a small effect, but it was consistent and it's there. Now this was surprising to us. High light triad scores, scores were also associated with higher scores and belief in pseudoscience. We, uh, we triple checked our data, that's where we started. Now, again, that means that people who score higher in light triad traits are also more likely to endorse beliefs in pseudoscience. So what does it all mean? This tells us that selfishness is associated with a higher belief in pseudoscience, and that light triad traits are also slightly associated with belief in pseudoscience. Yeah, where do we go from here? <laughs> We've got a small piece of the puzzle. The effects we found are small, but they are there. So here's what we're going to do next. The first thing we need to do is get a more diverse sample. Uh, we'd like to get a wider range of ages. And as you saw with those scales on the belief in pseudoscience, our students scored low to the middle of the scale, which is great, but for our research, we would like to see people that score high. So ideally what we'd like to do is be able to break the sample into high and low belief in pseudoscience and then look at how selfishness relates there. So we simply need a bigger sample and we're working on that. This relationship between belief in pseudoscience and the light triad, no one has really explored that yet. We would like to look farther into this and see what's going on. Light triad traits are good. We want to promote those traits. But if it is the case that people who score higher in these traits are also more likely to endorse pseudoscientific beliefs, we need to do something to help communicate how to be better consumers of information to be particularly targeted people who score higher in the light triad. And then finally, we need to see if there's any real world impact of what we found. So back to these ads, I've actually got a student at the McEwen right now who's just starting some research looking at selfishness and then they're going to show different types of ads and see how effective they are. Now ads are just one way to combat misinformation. This is just again one step in this larger research program trying to figure out ways to combat misinformation effectively. So we've got a ways to go. It's an interesting start, but we definitely need to collect some more data. So before we finish today, um, I'm just putting a call out. If there are any researchers who are interested in collaborating with us uh, and think you have access to a sample that would be more diverse than ours, please contact me. Um, this was all done online, so it would be very easy to share a survey, and uh, we'd love to work with you. So thank you very much. Apart from that, uh, I was very curious about the ads because if we're talking about targeting selfish people to get them to get vaccinated, I, I don't know what the problem was with the whole conspiracy theory of the 5G chip. 
that you can insert when you get the vaccination because, well, if you're doing that, a lot of very selfish people get the vaccine and then you get free 5G and you don't have to pay for Wi-Fi. So <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, 